In this lesson, we'll learn how to use Cinema 4D's infinite lights and sunlights. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at these two light types in this lesson. So once again, we're going to go up to our top bar, and let's start with something like the infinite light. Now, the infinite light works quite a bit differently from some of these other light types that we have. The infinite light really doesn't uh, try to simulate light that comes from one point in space. Instead, it's simulating a light source that is infinitely far away, something like a sun. So you'll notice, as I take my infinite light and try to move this around, it's actually not changing the illumination at all. And that's, again, because this is not actually the source of my illumination. If you could imagine, this is really just sort of a representation of light that is coming from infinitely far away throughout my scene. So when it comes to using an infinite light, the only thing that really has any impact on your light is the orientation. So this is sort of like, again, maybe a sunlight, where if you would imagine the sun rays moving in a certain direction, uh, this is sort of what we would get. So if I go back to my light, let's take a look at the general tab, and I'll just turn on maybe some simple ray trace shadows. Now if I press Alt-R on my keyboard and rotate this sun, you can see uh, sort of the effect that we have. One of the things that we start to get with this infinite light, again, it's not really trying to simulate light that is coming from one particular point in space. So whenever it comes to using shadows with something like this infinite light, you'll notice that our shadows run completely parallel to each other. Now this is very different from what we would get if we had maybe something like an omnidirectional light, where again, in this case, the light is coming from one particular point in space, so our shadows will radiate outward from that direction. But an infinite light, like I said, works a little bit differently. It is not trying to simulate something that is at this actual position in space. So this becomes a really, really useful light for something like an outdoor illuminated scene, maybe something like a sunlight, where you need your entire scene to be illuminated evenly, and you don't necessarily want to have a uh, particular point in space that's causing all of your shadows to radiate out. Uh, that's typically not the way that things would behave in the real world. So that is the basic use for this infinite light. Um, similar to this infinite light, we have what is inside of Cinema 4D called a sunlight. Now, a sunlight is essentially an infinite light with a little bit of extra control added into it. So if I take my infinite light, I could delete that and drop that in and change this to a sun. We could also uh, go to our shadow type, and uh, in this case it actually won't let us change to a sun, so we can only access the sun from up here. Now in my case, when I drop in this sun, everything goes dark. So what we have to do is, what with this sun, um, the positioning of this becomes very, very important. Now you'll notice if I take this sun and try to move it and rotate it, I actually can't. Whenever we start to work with this sunlight type, the orientation of our light is controlled by this particular sun tag. So if I come down here, we're now controlling the sunlight through latitude, longitude, and uh, nighttime or daytime uh, attributes. So let's say for today. I can plug in today's time, today's date, and what we need to do now is plug in our latitude and longitude to, to uh, describe where we are on the globe. So let's say we want to simulate something like uh, the position of Los Angeles. You can actually look online and find these uh, latitude and longitude positions for uh, almost any place. So for something like Los Angeles, California, that would be about 34 degrees north, and I'll say about 118 degrees west. There we go. Um, I, this is just sort of an approximate value. I didn't actually come in and get incredibly specific, but this should work just for demonstration purposes. And now we can put in a time. So this is based on 24-hour times. If I wanted this to be 8 o'clock in the morning, I would type in 08. If I wanted that to be, let's say, 8 o'clock in the evening, I would type in 20. And now we're at 8 o'clock in the evening. 
we have our date here. So right now this is December 19th, 2012. If I bump this up to maybe August 19th and change my time maybe to something a little bit earlier in the evening, now we can simulate what the light would look like at that point. So now if I come in and render this out, there is our lights and our shadows that have been applied. Now, whenever you're using this type of a light, what you do have to be concerned with is uh, internally what Cinema 4D considers your north, south, east, and west directions. So at this point, where my sun is sort of setting in the west, that is going to flow along my x-axis. So as my time starts to get later and later, it's moving further along that x-axis. If I put this maybe a little bit earlier in the day, there we are. You can see the shadows are sort of coming from this direction. Now, what if I wanted the light to have sort of its east-west direction uh, somewhere different, maybe, as the sun starts to set? Maybe I want it to go more over in this area. Well, there's really no way of controlling that from this point. So what you could do is maybe just create a simple null here, and I could take my sun and drop it underneath that null. Now I could take that null and rotate it, around and now my sun will set sort of over in this direction so now I can still take my sun and start to bump this up so I can start to get a little bit later in time so there's 15 you can see now my sun is sort of moving uh, more or less along my Z axis so that is one way of uh, coming in and sort of readjusting your sun direction if you've already come in and modeled out your entire scene and then don't necessarily want to have to go back and reorient everything in your scene just take your sunlight drop that underneath a null and now you can just simply rotate your null around okay very nice so as we start to get a little bit further along in this course we'll take a look at some alternative options for creating some realistic outdoor illumination but for now, that's a look at how we can start to utilize something like the sunlight or the infinite light in certain instances and in certain situations.